Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and today as you can see it's about these little earpieces or earphones which come under the name of crystal earpiece or ceramic earpiece or uh, piezo earpiece. Um, we're at the moment investigating uh, the use of different kinds of earphones or earpieces for our forthcoming uh, super crystal radio set and uh, of course one of the first choices when you uh, google about crystal radio uh, which uh, headphone or earphone you should use is about these uh, crystal earpieces now but we found out there are a lot of misconceptions and misinformation about these uh, crystal earpieces. So uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, some details. Um, you will find uh, when it's about the data of these, or let's first take a look at uh, what's inside here, inside the uh, capsule. I've um, got a photo from uh, the internet. Uh, here you can see there is nothing else but a uh, piezo disc uh, inside. Uh, shielded with uh, some uh, silver or aluminium uh, foil uh, to the back and um, then on the front you can see uh, you have this little uh, plug that plugs directly into your ear and when we take a, a little a closer look at how it looks inside we already can see one of the advantages um, of uh, concerning the sensitivity of these uh, crystal earpieces is that um, to the front in the direction to your ear uh, you can see that uh, the uh, shape of these um, well let's call it adapter uh, is uh, a bit like an exponential curve and it quite resembles a horn loudspeaker and if you know anything about uh, hi-fi loudspeakers uh, you will know that horn loudspeakers are the most efficient uh, loudspeakers available and that's of course uh, also valid for uh, earphones or earpieces uh, which have this kind of um, exponential funnel like uh, horn uh, the reason is um, in acoustics we have a concept that is a bit similar to impedance matching uh, in, in uh, electrical theory. Um, there is an acoustic impedance here of the transducer. In, this, in, in our example it's the uh, ceramic, um, uh, the uh, piezo uh, buzzer or uh, transducer. And um, the impedance, the acoustic impedance uh, of the transducer must be somehow matched to the acoustic impedance of the air and they are totally different. They are many magnitudes um, away from each other. And the best way to do this is with a horn-like uh, shape and uh, therefore you get extremely good efficiency. So th that is, um, except for the electrical sensitivity or e effectiveness of a uh, ceramic um, or crystal earphone, uh, that is another reason why these things are extremely sensitive. And uh, the third reason is they plug directly into your ear. So on the one side they shield you from the outside noise which is quite important when it comes to crystal radio where you where you must be able to listen to extremely low uh, noise um, sound and on the other side not to be disturbed by any outside noise and um, because uh, the the uh, channel here uh, goes nearly up to your eardrum uh, you get not only effective shielding but uh, the uh, sound produced by the piezo and um, matched in impedance by the uh, exponentially horn-like shape here is transmitted nearly directly in front uh, of your eardrum. So that makes uh, these little earpieces extremely effective 
uh, if you, uh, we made some calculation and they only need a few picowatts, unbelievable, 10 to the minus 12 power of a watt uh, just to produce a recognizable audio sound. Um, but now let's come to the uh, misconceptions about the electrical um, uh, data for these uh, little crystal earpieces. And thereby, uh, if you look up uh, the data that you get uh, from vendors that sell these things, um, you only get a, a one, one value, and that is that the resistance is greater than 10 megohms. Now, you might think, well, okay, that's uh, very good for crystal radio, so they're, they're, they don't present any load to your resonant circuit or to your uh, crystal detector, but that's not uh, quite true because this is uh, only the isolation resistance, therefore the value greater than 10 mega ohm. And we just in a second will try to measure the DC resistance with uh, our multimeter here and let's put it into ohms mode and try to measure the DC resistance. The, this multimeter goes up to 50 mig ohms, the maximum uh, that it can measure. And we can see it remains in overload, which means uh, in, in this example, the DC resistance um, is certainly even great, much greater than 10 mig ohms, but that's only the DC resistance. Now, what about the uh, piezo element inside. Well, that is basically, it's similar to a quartz crystal and basically the most um, dominant element is a capacitance. And in parallel to that is the negligible DC resistance here. That is the one that is greater than 10 mega ohms. Uh, but what about the uh, capacity? Uh, depending on the type, you get uh, from the vendor different values. Let's try to measure uh, this one here. Now we go to capacitance mode, null out the offset. And now let's see which capacitance we get. Now we get a little bit over 26 nanofarads. And um, now we can calculate uh, these 26 nanofarad. Well, what impedance does this capacitor have to the audio frequencies? And when it comes to impedance um, data concerning headphones or uh, transducers, uh, they are usually given uh, at a frequency of one kilohertz. Now, the, uh, the formula for the impedance of a, an ideal capacitor is that it is one on two pi times the frequency. In our case, this is uh, one kilohertz. Uh, times the capacitance, which means in our case we have 1 on 2 pi times 1 kilohertz times 26 nanofarad. And if you put that into your calculator, you get a, um, an impedance at 1 kilohertz. Remember, this is, this is only valid for, for a specified frequency. Uh, of around something around seven kilo ohms. Now, um, so that is already a quite a different uh, value to uh, to this uh, ten mega ohms. The ten mega ohms is not the load impedance that um, your crystal radio uh, sees when you connect the the crystal earphone uh, to your crystal radio. 
it's uh, it's around these uh, seven kilo ohms in our example. But this cannot be the full story because um, here we have an ideal capacitor, a negligible isolation uh, resistance, but somewhere uh, we, we, uh, the uh, energy for the sound produced, it must be, there must be something missing. And therefore now we uh, take a little closer look onto the properties uh, of the um, crystal earpiece with our LCR meter. And let's see what we get here. And I've set it, as you can see, to one kilohertz measurement frequency. We again get the uh, around 26 nanofarad. That, that is the dominant um, element of our uh, crystal earpiece. But uh, now let's see if we uh, take the pre uh, change it to the other properties, to the par more or less parasitic properties, if we get some other values. We have in series, here you can see LS, which means inductance uh, in, in series of around nearly one Henry. We can neglect uh, this because it has, if you uh, do the math, uh, that has no effect uh, on to um, the, um, um, the elements. Um, let's go one step further. And now we get a serious resistance of something around 100 ohms. So that's quite interesting. And let's remember uh, this. We still can try to measure the DC resistance. It will also give, of course, overload because also the LCR meter cannot measure uh, more than a few dozen mega ohms. So uh, what we found out is except for the uh, uh, around one Henry uh, inductance, which we leave out now here in our consideration, but we got this serious resistance of around 100 ohms. So now let's, um, let's uh, do the drawing again. What we have got, we have our capacitance of and this, this is the series uh, capacitance because we still have another element in series of around 26 nanofarad. And then we had a series resistor of around 100 ohms. And we have the parasitic isolation resistance, which we can for all practical purposes neglect of greater than 10 mega ohms. That's why I uh, made this here with uh, dashed uh, lines. Um, so uh, the series re resistance, you can look um, this as, uh, this is in fact where the acoustic energy is, um, is generated. And we have calculated that the 26 nanofarads give a round seven kilo ohms uh, impedance and the uh, 100 ohms series resistance, well, that, that doesn't add much to the seven kilo ohms. So we still can say that the total impedance Z is also around seven kilo ohms. If it's seven or 7.1 or 6.9, uh, that doesn't matter. But you should know that a, a crystal earpiece is not only a, uh, a capacitor which vibrates, but the vibration that uh, the, piezo, the piezo element is doing is uh, transferred uh, into, first of all, mechanical or here electrical energy. Here in the, se the series resistance is transferred or transformed into mechanical energy. And this mechanical energy is responsible for the sound production. Anyway, um, for uh, consider considering the usability and effectiveness of a uh, crystal earpiece in use for crystal radios, 
we just have to know that the load to our uh, to our crystal radius is something around seven kilo ohms at and you always have to remember to remember this at one kilohertz if we again take a look at the formula we can see if we would um, change the frequency uh, uh, tenfold let's make it 10 kilohertz uh, then uh, we we would get a uh, because it's in the denominator if we put uh, 10 kilohertz here in the formula we would not get um, excuse me I've taken the wrong drawing this was the right one if we take um, here 10 kilohertz uh, because it's in the de denominator uh, this uh, would get down by a factor of two so at 10 kilohertz the impedance is only 700 ohms and on the other side the other way around if we divide the frequency by a factor of 10 like if you go to 100 hertz then we would get 70 kilo ohms but at the typical audio frequency where all data are related to of one kilohertz we can um, for uh, this example um, crystal earpiece uh, we can uh, just for all practical purposes calculate with set around an impedance of a seven kilo ohm which presents the kind of load to your crystal radio so that was it for today just uh, a little bit of information concerning how crystal earpieces work and uh, I, I already can give you the result of our investigations um, of the uh, crystal earphone compared to um, electromagnetic earphones, uh, which are the standard kind of uh, headphones, headphone transducers. Uh, these are uh, nearly the most efficient and most sensitive listening devices. Uh, but uh, we will see later or in, in uh, one or uh, more episodes where we deal with uh, the uh, workings of crystal radio sets that this 7 kilo ohms is not yet ideal uh, for a direct connection to a crystal radio set. But anyway, the efficiency and the sensitivity uh, compared to the low price is extremely good and uh, there is only one very specialized uh, listening device which uh, is uh, called a balanced armature driver that is even a bit better than a crystal earpiece. So that was it for today. Thanks for watching. If you found it interesting give it a thumbs up and uh, Stay tuned. Until next time. Bye from Raja. Bye from Kanka Labs.